The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. He continued, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. I thought I would take a few moments to introduce myself a little bit to all of you. So my name is Father Chris uh, Gillespie. Uh, I've been a priest of the diocese for 26 years now. Uh, I just came from Wallaceburg, Port Lambton, and Dresden, so not too far away, just a little over an hour from here. I uh, grew up in Sarnia, but I was actually born in Scotland, so you may have not have detected my Scottish accent. Roll up a rim to win. I came to Canada when I was one and a half, so I wasn't even speaking at that point. So I grew up in Sarnia, uh, one of four children, the second of four. Uh, after I was ordained, I was, my first three parish assignments were in the city of London at uh, St. Pius X Parish, which has gone, we're gone a name change, is now Holy Family Parish in London, then Mary Immaculate Parish in London, and then uh, St. Peter's Cathedral, uh, just for a brief six months. And from there, I left uh, for a stint with the military. So I went to uh, Quebec for three months uh, to do workup training before spending six months in Bosnia as a chaplain to our peacekeepers uh, over there. So one of the... Uh, Benefits of that was that I had a nine-month French immersion experience, but it's been a number of years since I've been able to use that. So, uh, je serai content d'être capable de pratiquer mon français un peu, un peu uh, maintenant. I'll have to work on my French a little bit. It'll come, I hope. So, after uh, coming back from the military, I was assigned to uh, Stratford, to Immaculate Conception Parish there. I was the last pastor of just Immaculate Conception before they became joined together with the parish of St. Joseph's in Stratford. I was there for three years and then moved on to uh, Seaforth and Clinton for two years, then Seaforth and Dublin for another seven years after that. So nine years altogether in Seaforth and then uh, nine years, the past nine years again in Wallaceburg, Port Lambton, and the last four of those also uh, in Dresden. Uh, some of my activities I enjoyed doing, I like uh, running. I've been a long distance runner for a long time and in the last seven years I've gotten into triathlons and was surprised how much I enjoy that uh, as well. I enjoy uh, music. In uh, my last uh, parish in Wallaceburg, they started a community concert band, a Wallaceburg concert band. So I had the opportunity to go back to my high school instrument of the bassoon. And not many people know what a bassoon is, but it's a, it's a very low woodwind instrument. It's a double reed instrument. It kind of looks like a bazooka and uh, no connection with my military experience, but it kind of played off on the side like a tenor sax. And uh, being with a, from a Scottish accent, I've also over the years picked up uh, the bagpipes too. So if you hear strange noises coming from the rectory next door, no need to call the, the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. It's just me practicing the bagpipes. <laughs> One of the last priests I was with, a retired priest, Father Keith Morrison, was uh, joking. He wants me to try and speak French with a Scottish accent to people here, but I don't think I'll be trying to do that. A few days ago, I had my first uh, Mass in uh, the parish in Bell River. And uh, I was here about three or four weeks ago meeting with uh, Father Patrick and getting a, a bit of an orientation session and a tour of the places and got around to see the different parishes and that. And uh, I thought I remembered where the parish in Bell River was, but I wasn't quite sure when I got down the road there and I thought, is it one road back off the main road? So as I was looking for the parish, I called to mind uh, the words of uh, the Curie of Ars, uh, St. John Marie Vienne, uh, who was assigned to this little tiny parish in Ars in France and as he was walking to get there, he'd never been there before, and he got lost along the way. And uh, he came across a boy along the road, and he said to him, show me the way to ours, and I'll show you the way to heaven. So I thought, wouldn't it be neat if I got a chance to say that? Well, just as I was thinking that, I saw the parish, so I didn't get a chance to say that. But, but I'll still try to show you the way to heaven, and please help me to get there, uh, too. I'll invite you uh, to keep me in your prayers, too, as, as we begin here. 
One of my favorite uh, scripture passages uh, was found in today's gospel, uh, where Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I find that passage a a great uh, consolation at times where I'm feeling stressed about different things or a certain burden uh, weighing me down, Uh, this invitation to come to the Lord in prayer, and when I do that, uh, suddenly it seems lighter. Suddenly the Lord helps and carries uh, most of that burden. Uh, An incredible uh, gift and a good passage uh, to remember, this invitation to come to the heart of Jesus. If uh, any of you have moved before, you know that moving itself is is kind of a stressful thing. And uh, when you're moving from one community to another, it's also a bit of a grieving process. And I'm sure I've discovered many of you are grieving. You've had three priests leave at the same time as the three priests have come in, so I know you're also going through a grieving process of uh, saying goodbye to the priests that you've known for and loved for many years. And uh, I've been nine years in my last prayer, so it's a tough thing to leave uh, there as well. Uh, but one of the spiritual lessons which I learned about a month ago, I'm kind of carrying over to this, uh, this time as well. You may remember hearing about a month ago there was a horrific uh, car accident in Wallaceburg uh, that claimed the life of three young people. And a fourth is still in the hospital, and a fifth was hospitalized and, and then has been uh, released. And uh, I remember hearing about that uh, terrible accident and uh, asking God and saying, this is going to be a really tough time. God, I'm going to need some extra help and grace and strength to get through this uh, coming week and to be able to minister Uh, to the families involved. And uh, uh, I remember in saying that and asking for that help, uh, this kind of thought came to my mind immediately. And I've learned over the years to kind of see that and and trust that as one of the ways of God speaking to me, of uh, in prayer, when a thought comes to mind, sometimes it's it's often God speaking to me. And the words that came to mind right away were, just breathe. And it kind of took me back because it was, seemed so simple, uh, but yet so profound. Uh, Just breathe. In a way, you could say that uh, meaning remain calm, take it easy, uh, but also to take one day at a time. Uh, and sometimes when one day at a time even seems too much, then one breath at a time. Okay, I can take the next breath. Uh, for those who are uh, athletes, uh, you know the importance of breathing. If you want to go a distance at all, you have to have good uh, deep breathing and uh, continuous uh, breathing. On a whole nother level, there is a spiritual connection with that just breathe as well. Uh, the breath of God is the Holy Spirit. This invitation to, in prayer, be filled with the Holy Spirit. God will give all the gifts that, that I need if you simply stay and turn to the God every day uh, in prayer. It was an invitation to trust in the Lord and keep praying throughout uh, all of this. A few days later, in reflecting on that passage a bit more, I realized there's more to just breathe than breathing in the Holy Spirit. There's also breathing out, the other half of our breathing experience. And uh, there's an expression that says you can't give what you don't have. So in other words, to be able to minister to others, to give to others, to breathe others the gift of the Holy Spirit, I have to first in prayer be filled with the Holy Spirit and be close to the Lord uh, in prayer. So a great invitation for all of us at a time of stress or any time in our life, just breathe. It's interesting how over the years when you can read a scripture passage and you read it many times, sometimes something new uh, jumps out for you. And over this past week and reflecting on the scripture passage for today, Uh, One of the lines which struck me anew this time was, No one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And uh, the word choose uh, is what connected me to another scripture passage. If you remember, there's a leper who approaches Jesus and says, If you choose, you can make me clean. And Jesus answers, I do choose, be made clean. And this uh, invitation for us then... Uh, invitation for all of us is to grow in union with the Trinity, with all three persons of the Trinity, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we can ask Jesus, Jesus, please choose me, choose us, uh, to reveal the Father to us. Uh, in a sense, that's what we're, our whole purpose in this life is, to uh, grow in our union with God uh, and prepare ourselves for, for the kingdom of heaven, with that perfect unity with the Lord in the fullness of life, the fullness of love that the Lord is offering each of us. In this Eucharist today, we have a special opportunity every time we have celebrated the Eucharist to be united to the Lord in a special way, to grow in that uh, knowledge, that love, and a union with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.